I think that Hollywood should be free. And it says it's free, but it's not. National Security Cinema is a good label, I think, for describing a set of films which look at American foreign policy and American national security and are typically very favourable to national security interests. Entities like the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, Department of Defence and sometimes the White House attempts to influence Hollywood film scripts and other scripts often by offering tanks, helicopters, aircraft carriers, advice, extras dressed in uniform and so on. So they're able to give something to the film producers um, that they can't get at it elsewhere. Sometimes they just want to remove a line, sometimes they just want to have influence over the production so that there's no temptation by the producers to push the narrative down a line that would be more aggressive towards the government. The film Black Hawk Down, based on a book by a journalist, serious journalist called Mark Bowden. It details the US invasion of Somalia in 1992-93. There's only one fictional character in that who did not appear in the original book, and that's the character played by Ewan McGregor. Because in reality, the soldier, he had raped someone after he had come back from Somalia. And the military didn't want that. Didn't want to be reminding people that people come home and they're in an absolute mess and they end up doing horrendous acts when they're at home. So they changed the whole character. A couple of years ago, there was a report about the Iron Man films supported by the Department of Defense. One of the characters had made a little quip about, I'd kill myself to get that job, or words to that effect. Now, the Department of Defense came down hard on these because they interpreted that as being a joke that was making light of the suicides of veterans coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. There was a huge tense standoff that was extremely unusual, and eventually they just changed the line. It's just, it's just standard, it just happens all the time. Another one of the major um, owners of Hollywood, um, which totally contradicts this idea that Hollywood is this kind of liberal Meryl Streep type place. An actor's only job is to enter the lives of people who are different from us and let you feel what that feels like. One of the major owners of Hollywood is Rupert Murdoch. Very much pro-intervention, um, very much pro-militaristic policies. He is ultimately the backer behind anything coming out of 20th Century Fox. If you remember the films The Beach and Fight Club, interesting, provocative, dark film. Rupert Murdoch decided that he didn't like the dark tone that was coming out of his own studio. The output then became more conservative. And this is one of the big six studios. This has just affected a sixth of Hollywood output, and that's a big impact. You might very well be resistant to the political messages of individual films, and that's great but you might be less resistant to hundreds and hundreds of films and TV shows and video games constantly promoting the same message that the United States government and Western governments are essentially benevolent. If the media isn't helping awaken us politically to the dangers of nuclear war, the dangers of climate change, the dangers of just conflict generally, the ravages of the economic system, I'm not saying it's morally obliged to do that, but I certainly think it's morally obliged not to lie about that. And that's why I think it's really important when the military comes in and other organizations deliberately spin. There's one simple thing that could be done in Hollywood on anything. And that is instead of having at the end of the credits, thanks to the Department of Defense or any other entity, there should be a legal obligation for the beginning of the film to start with, this film was made uh, with the cooperation of the American military, uh, of American military, the Department of Defense, or any of these other entities. People will turn off. Viewers have enormous power. You should use it.